Welcome to Design Diary, the podcast where you get to look inside my board game design notebook as well as what's going on inside my head. We look at a new word each day from the sense of mechanics, tone, theme, or inspiration for a full game. Today's word is... It's coming. I'm pulling it up on my phone right now. I am, am delayed because I was setting up my big fancy pop filter pop filter so you don't hear my peas anymore um I, I splurged on it with with the the budget of this of this of this fancy podcast now it was like eight dollars on amazon or something like that but uh today's word is frolic to amuse oneself to make merry or to play and run about happily or romp so this is one that i sat here with my notebook last night struggling to 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 hit my marks I, I had so much trouble with this might be the hardest one yet um because it, it screams dexterity and in, in playfulness and 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 amusing oneself it's one of those things where it's just it's hard for me to think outside of dexterity and i don't want to go with the obvious because i want to challenge myself I don't just want to be different to be different. I love that challenge. So I, I dipped in dexterity a little bit, and then I dipped outside of it. So I'll just start reading. There's a huge struggle in this, too, and I'll talk about it. And it's something that I love, and I, I'm trying to nail. Uh, to amuse oneself is to do something for your own happiness or fun. So I associate it with a dance or a movement, a playful movement, where the result is personal happiness. And this is that hard, hard thing to, to get into a game is how do you achieve personal happiness? You know, sometimes there's moves that you can make in a game or things that you can do that just make you feel great. But that personal happiness is my is my like my white whale of game design. Uh, I also associate it with an animal playing, dancing and frolicking around. My computer's making noises. Uh, the pop filter does not prevent that. <laughs> um, so. Uh, an animal frolicking around, something in a, in a forest, a deer or a bunny or, or things like that. So I wrote, on your turn, you can set a sand timer, grab your animal token, and essentially do whatever you want. This is where the personal happiness comes into play. You can touch tiles, flip them over, take things that fit your agenda, stash them away, change up the state of the game to your liking. Why? Because that's fun. That has no... There's... There's nothing else to that right now. That's just, it's taking, one of those things that I, the thing that I like the most about HeroScape, for example, is not playing the game, but it's making the map. And it's one of those things that's just, it's sort of therapeutic. It's super creative. Uh, the potential of that map is through the roof. And then you can play the map and it might play really well and be awesome, but just seeing it and, and building it is is. It's like my like Lego. It's 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 great. Um, so doing that as part of a game is something I've always liked to explore. And tile laying, you know, map building games are essentially like that. With that being the game, but they're generally a little more strict in in your your reasoning for doing things. It's not just because it looks cool, but it can be. So I wrote, if you want to make some uh, neat scoring and power up mechanics, you could add to to it so now you have a reason to do things it's less about it being fun but it's about it you know actually mattering you know for for game purposes for example if i move things around on a map to make a little fort and like a mountain and then i put myself up on top of that mountain it th there are uh, there are fun things that you can do with that and it's also it also impacts the game but i wrote how do you make it so it just isn't isn't just a, a reason to get points and that's where I struggle. I think about games like like Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is is the one that I go to all the time. Why do you play Animal Crossing every single day? And it's because you like to and I haven't played the app. My wife plays plays it like crazy. But the older versions I played because I wanted collections. I wanted to full, I wanted to fill my room with with the certain collection. I wanted to make sure I had the money when the piece came up just because it looked great. And that's what I'm trying to achieve in tabletop design at some point is just because this looks cool and, and 
fits my 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 style and my plan and everything. I would love to hit that on a on, on a game, on a game design, but I haven't, and I definitely haven't with this yet. Um, uh, so maybe it's not points, but it's positioning. You can dance around the play area, covering things up, having a lot of fun with it. Uh, but the positioning, it helps you in some way. And it's hard to have such an action style word and not go with dexterity. Flicking, spinning, all that feels very frolicky to me. So then I said, how about ditching the essence of the term and going with the theme of an animal dance? So players pair up two animals at a time to see the results of, of their frolicking. Um, and that would all be about how two things behave together. Uh, and behavior in animals is a, is a cool, cool uh, concept because there's a wide range of animal behavior. So if you play two at a time, let's just say, uh, I'm trying to think of something where you play two and see the results. It's sort of like a very narrowed down smash up where you're playing two decks and kind of seeing how they combo together. This is just two cards. Um, playing two at a time can give you neat combinations where like a bear can clear a big path in, in its frolicking and a penguin might waddle along, uh, charming the crowd. So what are the benefits of that wider path and then the penguin just shooting down the middle? I'm not sure. Uh, all eyes are on the penguin at that point. It's It provides focus. That's neat. Um, and then the, the penguin can come in and charm the crowd. And it's neat if there's a, a timing mechanic where one goes and then the other because a penguin charming a crowd, then the bear uh, uh, clearing the path uh, works in a very different way than, than vice versa. So a tiger could pounce while an eagle can swoop. And how can the two of those things together, um, how, can, how can they behave together and create great results? And, you know, got to figure out what they're actually even interacting with to, to make reason for everything. But I, I don't have that. Uh, I just stuck with just the term frolic and trying to figure it out. Uh, and I'm not sure what any of this means, but it could turn into a very abstract game where movements equal movements on a board. Something along the lines of, um, why can't I think of, uh, hold on, i got to remember the name. And I'm back. Uh, Onitama. I had to run over to my game collection and see. But in that game, uh, you're, you're trying to hit certain positioning on a very abstract board, trying to get your pawns into a certain position in order to win the game. I can, I can think of ways that this could kind of merge with that that very abstract concept um that pulls the fun part out of it though is what my notebook says uh, i feel like it's a, it's more animal movements and less frolicking when it's a you know a gridded blocky movement game you sort of lose that that playful nature um and going back to my first concept just having that timer and doing whatever you want but also at the same time without it being a race for points or a race to just... I, I feel like the timer should just be giving you your time instead of limiting your time. And that's a whole other concept to think about. And that's all I have in my notebook. Launched the Kickstarter today, so I've been answering emails all day. So it's, this is a quick one, but I think it's a, I think it's a really good one to think, think about because frolic is hard. If you have an idea, definitely share it. Because this is one that I, I absolutely struggled with. I got stuck and I, I tried really, really hard to, to dive into it. But it was just, it's, it's so, it's, I, 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 was, I was getting very ambitious with it instead of just, just letting it just settle. I, I have these grand ideas of a game that has, you know, no points and almost no point except for to have fun. At the same time, I'm trying for a time limit without racing so I put these these restrictions on myself that I probably shouldn't have and I probably would have gotten a little further. But let me know what you have because this is I think this is a cool one. All right, see you guys around. Thanks. Bye.